Coming up on Varsity Sports, we'll get you caught up on the big headlines in the high school basketball world, including Tuesday's top five battles from the Metro Conference to the EDC. There's been some scorching play on the court. We'll let you know who's raising the mercury in our weekly forecast. This quiet giant headed to the herd. Find out what his current and future coaches think of his potential in our one-on-one -on -one session with Washington Dunker Denga. All that plus our picks for the best matchups of the week. Varsity Sports starts right now. And how is everybody doing? Alongside Jason Andera, I am Jay Elson. Well, we are going to tip things off tonight with a look at some of last week's high school hoops headlines from across the Dakotas. And we start in South Dakota, Jason. Class AA boys with Stevens gets even. They did get even. They played the Riders last year twice, lost both games, one on the road, one in the semifinals. Of course, Darius Buss was the coach of Stevens last year. This year, he goes to Roosevelt, and Stevens gets the early season win. The top right girls teams from South Dakota Class A and B went one on one over the weekend. Yeah, number one team in one class versus number one team in the other class, and it's pretty apparent St. Thomas Moore was the team to beat. Couple big performances, one from Duffy, one from Sweden. Uh, in North Dakota Class B girls, several players enjoyed a Lions share in Bishop Ryan's yeah, latest win. The Lions are learning to share, and they've been sharing well for many times, but they had four different players go over 20 points in their 133 win over Beulah on Saturday. It was Maddie Wall, Gabby Bowl, Hannah Stewart, and Cheyenne Smith. Schmidt all going over 20 points. Yeah, the second game, second consecutive game, they've gone over 100 points, which is ridiculous. Back itself to go to the Washington boys, looking like a front runner. Well, they look like a front runner because of their front court. Their front court of uh, Matt Farniak, Cole Benson, and Dan Goose supplied 40 five of their 46 points in their big win over Oklahoma. Big EDC matchup in West Fargo on Tuesday night. They went the way of the road dog. Yeah, the dogs, the Huskies pulled away late to hand West Fargo a loss. They go to 10 and one on the season now, looking really good in that EDC. Northern Cass earned some exposure with a 77-76 double overtime win against defending champion Fargo Oak Grove. Yeah, it's a huge upset for Northern Cass, uh, getting a big win over Fargo Oak Grove on Tuesday night. Big shot at the end of the game by Logan Nelson with less than a second left to take the win. And finally, McDonald's All-American nominees are in. The nominees are... And it looks like two from South Dakota, Tag and Larson, headed to Iowa from Sioux Falls Roosevelt, and Alexis Swedland from St. Thomas More heading to Washington State, both nominated. And in North Dakota, Hannah Stewart of Minot Bishop Ryan, no surprise on all three of those ladies making it to that list. Certainly want to send our congratulations to them for that. As of now, Dengu, the only boys player between North and South Dakota that has signed to play Division I hoops, will introduce you to the Sioux Falls, Washington standout when we come back. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. Welcome back. We continue to profile the region's top talents with our version of one-on-one. -on -one. This week, we get to sew North and South Dakota together through the story of Dan Gu. He was born in Sudan, but has played high school ball in both Fargo and Sioux Falls. And last October, he completed the circle by choosing to play his college basketball at North Dakota State. Jason joins us now with more. Thanks, Jay. Well, as I was waiting to talk to Dangu in the halls of Sioux Falls, Washington, I ran into three different either Washington coaches or teachers, and they all asked me what I was doing there. When I told them I was getting ready to talk to Dangu, they all replied with the same two words, good kid. He's also a good basketball player. He's taken quite a long road to get there. Over to six foot eight inch senior, number 32, Dang. When you talk about Dangu, one thing is sure to come up, dunking. And when you mention that word dunk, a smile comes across his face. It feels good because it's just a momentum changer. You know, when the crowd's getting hype, it just gives you a little bit more energy. You see your teammates get hype and it just goes on from there. As we're walking around class or school, everybody's like, hey, you gonna dunk it today? And just like, I'll try. <laughs> While dunking may have put him on the map, Dang has had to use a map to get where he is today. Uh, I was born in Sudan, and then I came to Fargo when I was six years old, and then grew up there around North Fargo for a while. And then during middle school up to seventh grade, then I moved to South Fargo. That's 
then after South Park, I came here sophomore year, like second semester of sophomore year. But as many miles as he's logged physically in his 18 years, he's traveled even further in his basketball development over the last 18 months. Yeah, I mean, he came in just really raw uh, in, a, in his sophomore year. We could see he had that potential, he had those abilities, those skills to, to become a really good player, but it just took some time, it just took some time. Uh, and then Deng really progressed the second half of last year uh, into the spring and then of course into the summer when he started getting looked at by some colleges and, and, and playing a really good AAU schedule and, and that's gonna all pay off for him uh, this season. Goo credits Coach Nelson with pushing him to become great. When I came here, you know, I was I had the height and I was I had potential, but he pushed me harder and he's just he's been on me like he doesn't let me be like, oh yeah, you're good. You can just go go do whatever you want. Like he holds me accountable to all the little things. Dang says his goal as a freshman was to play Division I basketball. But it wasn't until a couple summers later he started playing AAU ball. And at that point, it became obvious that Goo's talent would get him to his D1 goal. NDSU, SDSU, and USD were all in the hunt for Goo's services last summer. But Goo chose Fargo for his college home. Uh, it was a lot of, uh, they came down here every day to support, like they came to all the open gyms. They showed they wanted me, that I was their number one guy. Then family down there made it a lot easier. Before Dang starts his college career, he knows there's a few things he has to work on. Uh, definitely my weight, just because it's going to be very physical, so I got to put on some weight and shooting. I got to work on my shot. Just three pointer outside. Uh, a lot's changed, you know, just going back with coach and working on all the little details and just polishing up my game. I feel like I've grown as a player a lot more in these past two years. If the last two years of improvement are any indication of how much he will improve over the next couple years, Bison fans are in for a treat. All right now, Jason, Dangu's not a name that maybe everybody knew coming into this season. He sort of came out of nowhere. Well, last year his stats really didn't pile up like a D1 prospect, and the reason for that is he started out the season with an iron deficiency, he had trouble getting up and down the court. Mm. Uh, once the doctors figured that out, he had a very strong second half to last season. He played AAU ball for the first time in the summer, and that's when he really got on the radar, and NDSU latched onto that very quickly and uh, really was the front runner through the whole recruiting process, mm. though, although Dang said that USD was working very hard to try to get him to come to Vermillion also. Yeah, I think South Dakota State was in on him too. They also gave an too, offer, yeah. and then they, they backed off just a little bit because they wanted to recruit some more guards okay. in their 2015 class. Well, you know, obviously he's a big body, 6'8", 6'9", range, uh, big but skinny, and, and how do you think that translates then going forward? Well, they need guys with big frames in the Summit League, and, mm -hmm. and they're going to get that, but he doesn't quite have it right now. Although, if you look at a picture of him last year versus this year, he's put a lot of weight on in mm -hmm. that, uh, in that uh, weight room, and a lot of that because of his coach, Craig Nelson, has really stressed getting stronger. And he's going to take the whole year next year to redshirt. He already okay. knows that, uh, to get bigger and stronger and to really to work on that outside shot. So obviously, Craig Nelson, uh, pretty pleased to have the opportunity to coach him this year. The guy coaching him next year will be David Richmond at North Dakota to state and here's what he had to say about his prized recruit dang's unbelievable talent on the floor and i think he's only scratching the surface but the young man was the homecoming king at sioux falls washington high school and, and only being there a year and a half you know that, that gives me goosebumps you know i mean that that's the person that, that i and we want to be surrounded with and um and i think he's still got a lot of good relationships back here um, it's my understanding that his mother has just moved back or is in the process of, of moving back. So, uh, again, I think this will be home for him uh, for a lot of sense. Of time. Well, winter was a little warmer in some high school gyms last week. Find out who's heating up and who brought the thunder in this week's high school hoops forecast next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And yeah, welcome back. Well, we get it. It's still cold outside. Fortunately, the map inside our Varsity Sports studio is always pleasant. And folks, let me tell you, there's no one that you're ever going to come across that's more in tune with the barometric pressure, at least in terms of high school basketball, <laughs> and this guy right here. 
Jason and Darity has got this week's high school hoops forecast for us. Thanks, Jay. That's one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at why it's getting so warm outside. I think it's because of these great performances we've been seeing all over North Dakota. We start with Blaze Irwin, 22 points against uh, West Fargo on Tuesday. The game before that went for 18 against Grand Forks Central. 40 points is a good total in two days. You see a four right here. That doesn't look too hot, does it? But it is. That's four games in a row that Gabby Bowl has gone over 20 points. She's on a tear right now. And then Deshaun Eikens, 20.7. That's his points per game average. Folks, he is a freshman, and he averages seven rebounds a game, over 20 points. You do not see that with many freshmen. Let's take a look at South Dakota now. Noah Vetris went for a 43-point game. Sometimes we do two-point totals, two-game totals. That's one game against uh, uh, Milbank. He just absolutely went off. And then West River, you see Alexis Swedland went for 28 against Warner. That's against the number one team. A great total for her. She does that all the time. And then Sam McLeod, 23. That's his points per game average. He also averages over 10 rebounds per game. He averages a double-double. He's having a great start to the season. Let's take a look at the Thunder report now. Who's bringing the Thunder? It's always Sioux Valley. Colin Kramer gets it started, and then on consecutive possessions, folks, Austin Dybert comes in with a two-hand flush, and then another possession after that. Oh, look my. at that. Colin Kramer, he's going off. He's going to be a regular on this segment. Goes reverse, and then Dangu splits the O'Gorman defense and goes up hard for the two-hand slam, and he literally gets the crowd going crazy. They love it over there at Washington. They do. That's a treat every time. And then you see Archambeau with the feed. Oh. McLeod with the slam. What a pass, Jay. Yeah, that's a great finish. Uh, picture perfect alley-oop. Sam McLeod is making his big sister proud. That's right. Rapid City Stevens off to a great start. That's your Thunder Report. And let's take a look at the weekly planner. Some of the best games coming up over the next seven days. You see uh, the Patriots taking on... Um, uh, Washington. That'll be second game for Washington against a top five team in uh, just over three days. And then some other great per, uh, or great games coming up over the next seven days. Uh, a lot of them should be good contests. Um, not many blowouts expected in the seven-day planner. I think we're going to have some great matchups. We'll take a look at a couple of those, Jay, in our Pick'em contest, but uh, mm -hmm. always great games to take, take note of. Uh, as you mentioned, we are going to uh, offer up our picks for some of those games uh, here coming up a little bit later on. But first, we're going to put Jandy on the hot seat. The fast break coming up next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. Well, it's time to run the fast break. I'm going to fire a five-pack of fast-paced hoops questions at Jandy. See if he can beat the shot clock. Put 35 seconds on the board. Right. And here we go. What team, Jandy, outside of your top five in the rankings, boys or girls from North or South Dakota, do you think has the best chance of making a championship run? Well, uh, outside the top five, well, first of all, you got to pick a class that's pretty wide open. And I think the most wide open class right now is North Dakota Class B. It is crazy wide open. Um, and a team I think that's on the up and come is New England. I mean, that's a team that's gonna take a while to gel. They've got so many new transfers, you think they're really gonna be peaking in March. So right now, they do have a couple losses on the season, but I really think uh, as Daniel Prince works in some of those scores and rebounders that they've gotten and that size that they have, that's a team that's gonna be getting better and better as the season goes on and possibly playing for a championship and uh, made it. Barely. All right, we're talking teams there. Let's move it over to the individual side of things. Who is one player Let's base this on performance so far this season okay. that you would want in your starting lineup. Give me one boy, one girl from South Dakota. Call it your fantasy lineup. Okay, my fantasy lineup uh, based on performance this season. I, well, I think you got to start with Dane Goo. I mean, that mm -hmm. guy, you, you cannot match up with that guy in South Dakota right now because he not only can handle the ball, he can shoot the ball. He's a great rebounder, gets the team excited, and his basketball IQ has gotten so much better in the last couple years. I think that's the kind of guy you have to start a team around. And on the girls' side, I got to take Alexis Swedland because in girls' basketball, you need somebody who can who can really control the basketball uh, and is a good ball handler, and as well as the shooting that she brings and all the intangibles. Sure. I mean, she is the top player right now. And a couple of D1 prospects. It never hurts to start with that kind of talent. Same yeah. question now, but this time, give me one boy, one girl from North Dakota. Nice. Who do you want in your starting spot? Oh, God, the girls' side is absolutely <laughs> torture to make this pick. 
Uh, again, though, I think in girls basketball, you have to have somebody who handles the ball. And I think that goes to Sarah Jacobson. I mean, I love Hannah Stewart. I love Lexi Claybo down low. But if I'm starting a team, I need Sarah Jacobson, who can do a little bit of everything. On the boys' side, maybe even harder. But uh, I don't think there's that one great player in North Dakota that you just are drooling over in the, in the fantasy draft. But what Dakota Halverson has done this year with his point scoring and with his distributing and with his consistent outside shooting, I'm going to go with Dakota Halverson of mine. Yeah, point guard is the quarterback of the team. Uh, never bad never bad to start uh, in that department. All right, let's move on. We've seen several extremely lopsided scores already this season. Hazen defeating Richardson Taylor 72-9. Bishop Ryan girls won uh, by scores of 103-31 to 31 and 100-33 last week. St. Thomas Moore beat Hot Springs earlier this year, 86-7. to 7. The list goes on. My question to you, is it time for a mercy rule in high school basketball? Um, well, these scores have been happening for a long time. I mean, that's just the nature of basketball. Is It just takes a few good players to really tip the scales, really get the seesaw. But uh, is it time for the mercy rule? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's too hard to install that rule. Um, it's just going to happen sometimes. I, I think that both teams know what they're getting into when it's a blowout like that. It's not like you're going to hurt somebody's feelings for the rest of their life. They'll live with it. They know that they just don't have the talent to, to measure up. And um, too hard to put a mercy rule in. And it's, it is hard to look at those scores, though, when they do come in. It, it, is, it really – you do feel bad for them, but – yeah, too hard to put a rule. A little sticker shock when, when you see one of those roll in through yeah. the paper uh, on a given night. So, all right, finally, random one for you. We are in the highlight business, Jandy. What's the better highlight? What makes for a better highlight? A really good dunk or a buzzer beater? Well, we're talking high school, right? Yeah. In high school, I think it's the buzzer beater. I mean, you don't get that many really good dunks, although we've seen a few good ones yeah, on the Thunder have. Report over the last couple of weeks, and those are always exciting. But... A buzzer beater. I mean, come on. You can't. You can't script those. You can't see them True. coming. Uh, they are so rare. I think back to the one a couple years ago that I shot in the Lincoln Gym yeah. with Nermeen Kurjalic and uh, hit that over half court shot after getting a steal against Yankton in a playoff game. And I don't think there's been a better highlight that I've ever seen. Yeah, not not that you've probably shot, not that we've seen in Sioux Falls, I, maybe. I um, especially the quality of the video work on that, buddy. It was fantastic. You can go to see it for yourself. Uh, the Midco SM page well, on YouTube, 230,000 views. No big deal. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got a pair of top five matchups on the schedule this week. We're going to make our picks for those and let you know who we think should be on Upset Alert. That's coming up right after this. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. We wrap things up with another round of high school hoops pick 'em. We are one week into this contest, and Jandy out in front by one game to this point. It is, of course, all about the winners and the occasional upset pick. So here we go. Four games, two each from North and South Dakota. And we're going to start in North Dakota Class A boys. Century at Minot. This should be a pretty good game. Yeah, you look at the rankings and you say, wow, we've got two of the top teams in North Dakota. But you look a little deeper, and it really does look like Minot is quite a bit better. I think Dakota Halverson and his play has gone up so much. He's the best player on the court. And usually the best player on the court will bring home a win. I think they will. Your forecast had Minot win in this game at about an 85% chance. Uh, I actually agree. I think Minot gets the win in this one. Uh, the Magi have been very good. We know that. But, but you know, part of it is they've got quality wins already over yeah. West Fargo, Bismarck, and Wapaton to their credit. That just kind of proves that, that they belong Good at number one. In Class A girls in North Dakota, excuse me, Class B girls in North Dakota, Thompson travels to Kindred. Well, Kindred undefeated so far this season. A great start for them. Thompson is basically undefeated. Their only loss comes to uh, Bishop Ryan, which pretty much everybody loses mm -hmm. to Bishop Ryan. Uh, Thompson didn't bring back as much as, you know, people thought maybe they'd be off a little bit without Shannon Gallagher, but they've stepped up really nice. Emily Overbeats had a great start to the season. I think Thompson has enough to give Kindred their first loss of the year. Thompson is 6-0 on the road. They're, they were coming into the week. Kindred, though, 5-0 and at home. They've yeah. won their home games by an average of 19.2 yeah, points. Dominant. I like Kindred in this game, so I'm going to go the opposite direction. It's South Dakota boys uh, matchup of two of the top teams in Class AA. This is a really good matchup here. Sioux Falls Lincoln and Sioux Falls Washington. Size-wise, these two teams yeah. match up better than they do with anybody else. That's the fun part of this game. You've got Addison Park and, and Malik Dunn on Lincoln's side. 
who usually nobody can match up with. And on the other side, you've got Dang Gu and Cole Benson, who almost nobody can match up with. So it's going to be fun to watch these two teams go at it down low. I think it's going to come down to the guards, really. And I think Washington guards might have enough to get this one done. Caleb Johnson's had a good year for Lincoln, but I think Sam Sagano steps up in this one, gets that home win. I think that home court advantage is going to be huge in this one. I think this is virtual toss up here. 50-50 really chance, uh, despite the fact that it's in Washington's gym and that you would think uh, would give them a little bit of an advantage. Uh, but I'm going to go with my gut in this one. I like Lincoln. I like yeah. Addison Park. I like Caleb. Uh, and, and I think that they're, they're just going to have enough to get it done. Washington, while they've been impressive, their win over O'Gorman the other night was with O'Gorman being a little bit shorthanded. It was a little sloppy. And they've had to come back in their last they what, have. two or three before that. Yeah, so. they have. It's not been perfect uh, play on their part. So I like Lincoln to get the win uh, against Washington. Finally, uh, a championship rematch in uh, South Dakota Class B girls this week. Sanborn, Sanborn Central wound socket at Warner. Well, or taking on Warner at the hands of Class B. Yeah, both teams got their first loss last week of the season. I hope it's half as good as the actual championship game was yeah, last right. year, but a lot of different players in this game. This this year you got Maya Sellen going for a Sanborn Central wound mm -hmm. socket and uh, a lot of different players for Warner. Just not as, as deep as they have been in the past. I think uh, Warner, though, is still the better team in this one. I like Warner as well. Sanborn Central Woodsocket has played just one team with a winning record. They lost that game, 64-49 to Mount Vernon Plankington. Yeah, that was last Saturday. That's a tough matchup for and, them, though. Meanwhile, sure. Warner has played teams like St. Thomas Moore and things like that, and they got blown out in that game, but I just like their strength and schedule yeah. a little bit more. I like Warner uh, as well. Time for our upset picks of the week now. I'm going to go North Dakota boys. I'm going to take New England. I think that's a team that is on the rise, as I said, in the fast break segment of the show. I think they get the win over Beulah, uh, who a lot of people like as one of the top teams in Class B. I'm going to go uh, South Dakota boys, Class B. I like Summit over Langford area. Both these teams are actually undefeated, but Langford area is getting a lot more love oh, yeah. in the polls. Nobody's recognizing Summit. Five of the Eagles' six wins this season have come against teams that are 500 or better. I think they get another one All against right. Langford. That coming up on Thursday night.